I absolutely love my mini split system. These things work great. This is one for Mr. Cool. Functionally, they're all basically the same, but they've also all got an Achilles heel. That's that if anything blocks the airflow to this outside unit, you are gonna have reduced cooling, more expensive electric bills, and potentially the whole thing can fail. And it's important that you actually clean this. The problem with the DIY systems are, you're not having service calls from a company, so it depends on you to do this basic maintenance if you want your system to last the longest amount of time possible. I'm gonna show you two different methods for cleaning this. One of them is super easy and there's really no excuse for not doing it. The second way is a bit more involved, but it's gonna give you a much more thorough cleaning. After turning off the power, you wanna look around your unit, especially in the back. This is where you're gonna get leaves and build up. You wanna get in there just with your hands, pull anything out. Your split ductless is kind of like a um, radiator in your car. And these little fins, you can see a couple of them there are pressed in. If you just push on them with your finger, you can actually dent them. So you don't wanna to touch them at all. We don't have to take the entire thing apart. Don't go any further than you need to. I'm just gonna remove this top cover and that should give me access to the inside portion that I wanna be able to clean. Here we can see we've got a couple of exposed screws. This is what you're looking for. Don't start getting pry bars and start pulling on anything. You will damage the unit. You only wanna take apart things that you can see or if you feel something is kind of stuck, I'll show you a way to find out if there might be a hidden screw. I'm gonna start with these two. Then you can go ahead and try to give the lid a pull, but as you can see, it's not coming off. Don't force it. That generally means there is another screw that you've missed. But on the opposite side, I don't see any exposed screws except for the electric cover. That's because underneath the electric cover is another hidden screw, and that's what's holding on the lid. This is a really common practice, so if you can't get something apart, take an extra second to look around. And now that I can remove the hidden screw, the lid comes right off. Now this is well worth a couple of extra minutes because look at the access it gives me. I can see the hole inside of the coil and now I can do a really thorough job cleaning. Now look at the bottom of the unit. You're generally going to see leaves, mulch, and debris. This is the first stage of your cleaning. You want to get all that stuff out by hand. Now we can move on to the next step that will clean the coil. Now this is what I'm going to use to clean it. You want to use something that's rated for air conditioners. You can use dish soap as I showed you in one of my old videos, but if you get this, you're certain that it's designed to work on air conditioners. You don't have any fear about it. With dish soap, you have to make sure you rinse everything off completely. It does say self-rinsing, which means technically you could spray it on and just walk away. That is not gonna be a good idea because you really wanna push the dirt out and to do that, you're gonna need your garden hose. This is supposed to be to help you scrub and it can also be used to straighten those fins. I don't recommend using this. This is kind of a gimmick. You just wanna use what's inside the can. You're probably going to want to wear gloves while you're spraying this chemical. It's not particularly toxic. It's not going to kill all your plants. You're not going to want to just spray the whole unit. It's designed to get rid of any debris inside of these cooling fins. I want to start at the top because as it runs down, you get a little bit of extra cleaning action. And you want to shoot that right into the fins. You can see it foams up right away. You can do it from the back as well from the outside. So this is why if you don't take your cover off, it's not the end of the world. And with the cover off, it's very easy to get the entire thing. Look at the difference here. You can angle it right down. And I'm focusing the cleaner on the back. You don't need to clean these other parts. They'll get rinsed with water, that's plenty. Behind the electrics. Corners are always important. People forget about those. Typically going to be one can per job. Once the can's out, you're basically done. You're going to allow that cleaner to work in here for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you're ready to rinse it off. If you called an outside company to do a full service and cleaning, probably cost about $400, and they don't even always clean the outside unit. I can't explain why, whether it's laziness or they just don't think it's necessary, but the manufacturer is going to tell you you are supposed to clean these two times a year if you're running them full time. And if you're in a cold climate like me, you'll likely want to clean it at least one time a year. So now that our cleaner's been setting up for about 15 minutes, we're ready to rinse it off. Again, just use your regular garden hose and you're going to begin at the top. Now remember, this unit is not waterproof, but it is designed to be rinsed and soaked like this. And now at the bottom, I can already see stuff coming out. Now with the cover off, it's wonderful because I can easily fire from the inside out, which is the best way to do it. Within a few seconds, you can already see that the foaming is beginning to stop. That means our cleaner is getting completely rinsed out. You can see everything's already coming out the bottom, including the dirt. It's important to take your time when you're rinsing. They will definitely be cleaner in areas that you may have missed. See all that? 
So most of that is gonna rinse right out. The leaf I'll grab with my hand. I don't see any debris. The fins look clean. There's nothing, and that's what you want. You don't wanna have any leaves in there, no debris. Now the side benefit of using that foaming cleaner is all that stuff that was in the channel there is also gone as a combination of the cleaner and the hose. Number one reason most of these AC guys get service calls is that this outside unit is plugged, blocked, filled with something, stopping the airflow. Doesn't matter whether you're running heating or air conditioning, reduced airflow is gonna give you reduced cooling or heating. So this is the first thing you wanna do for maintenance. Now we just need to replace our cover. Just gonna be reversing our steps. This does have a front and a back. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little arrow there showing you that that is facing front. Okay, we've got our, it's worth taking a second or two to make sure your cover's on properly. If you find these screw holes don't line up, oftentimes you just need to put a little bit of pressure on the cover to push it down because there's a couple of gaskets in there and then tighten them both once they're in place. And our cover is feeling good. Now, what if you don't want to take the cover off? I know a lot of you folks are probably watching and saying, I don't want to touch the inside of that. That is okay to do. You can grab your garden hose, still get the foaming cleaner. You're just going to want to go around the outside. So spray the portions you can see from the outside, get the back. But if the unit has been in place for over five years, you are going to have so much buildup inside that you just can't get to without removing the cover. And finally, you want the unit to dry out before you turn the power back on. I'd wait at least an hour, then go ahead and flip your switch and you should be back in business. Come <laughs> on.